Hi, this is Charlie Christensen for Technique One. Our topic today is vocal health, but I'm actually changing that to vocal hygiene. When we talk about vocal health, a lot of times we focus too much on the things that can go wrong. And with vocal hygiene, we're talking about trying to ensure that things go right. So how can we take care of our voice? You should just think like an athlete. So if you imagine that you're a professional athlete or a college athlete, uh, what would you do to stay healthy? You would... Uh, probably do the following things. Um, the first thing for us, though, is to speak well. Uh, we've talked about in class before the fact that speaking and singing are so similar. So uh, support your breath. Make sure that you're not breathing out a monotone. It's kind of like if you sang the same note all day long, your voice would feel tired. But if you're speaking on the same note all day long, your voice is going to be tired as well. Avoid vocal fry. Vocal fry is this sound. little bit like the exorcist. Most people think that it comes from a really low pitch. It actually comes from not using enough breath support when you're speaking. So a lot of times when you're tired or it's in the morning, um, you'll have a lot of vocal fry because you're just not breathing well enough. You're not using your air. Be wary of that vocal fry sound. A lot of times it happens at the beginning and the ends of sentences. Uh, if you have trouble with this, my recommendation is that you tell your friends and your family, the people that you talk to the most, and tell them, hey, um, I'm, I use a lot of vocal fry, but I'm trying not to. So when you hear me, hear me make this sound, uh, uh, I want you to point it out to me. You want to find your optimal speaking range. Most people speak at the absolute lowest pitch in their range. So find a, find a pitch that... Um, a pitch range that feels really comfortable for you. Obviously don't shout or whisper uh, because that's using either too much breath or not enough breath. Um, whispering especially is uh, letting a lot of extra air go over our vocal folds which can be drying. Speaking of drying, uh, obviously it's important to hydrate. Um, just like all other normal humans, we should drink 8 to 12 glasses of water a day. There's a saying in singing and that says sing wet pee pale. I won't go into any further detail. Uh, avoid dehydrating beverages. Um, so originally it was thought that caffeine is is really dehydrating. Uh, it turns out it's not as dehydrating as we initially thought, but uh, stay away from drinking a ton, a ton of coffee. Uh, use a humidifier. They're very inexpensive and particularly in the Midwest in the winter, it's really important that you have a humidifier in the room, especially when they turn on the heat in your building. And here's another little trick. Breathe through your nose. When you're walking outside, if it's cold uh, or just any old time. If you can breathe through your nose, uh, your vocal folds will actually stay hydrated better and uh, you're much less likely to breathe in uh, something bad because your nose basically works as a natural filter for the air that you're breathing in. Another thing to think about is getting plenty of rest. And so that's, this number is different for every person. Some people need seven hours, some people need closer to 10, somewhere around seven or eight hours is kind of the normal accepted range of rest. So uh, make sure that you're actually getting that. Avoid unnecessary drug use. Sometimes, um, sometimes we have to take a prescription, sometimes we have to take pain medicine, but avoid it as much as you can. Particularly antihistamines and decongestants, these are incredibly dehydrating. So uh, you can use them, but I'd highly recommend not singing very much when you're using them. Other things to avoid are aspirin, ibuprofen, other anti-inflammatories. Uh, these increase the risk of a hemorrhage because they thin your blood. And a single dose of aspirin can last in your system for seven days, which is something to, to think about so that if you, if you take it, it's not just the next day all of a sudden everything is, is fine. Ibuprofen lasts for two days. What we recommend if you need to take some pain medicine, if you have a headache or something, uh, Tylenol is actually uh, doesn't have these kind of same side effects as uh, the anti-inflammatories. Um, in addition to that, obviously, um, alcohol is very dehydrating. Uh, that's kind of what it does. That's why you get drunk. But besides that, it's also, uh, it reduces your ability to kind of feel if something is wrong. So if you're drinking on a gig, just know that you may feel really great and happy, but you can now feel what's going on in your vocal folds and your larynx much less than you could before you're drinking. The smoke from cannabis is significantly more damaging to the vocal folds than, than even smoking cigarettes uh, because ash deposits can land on your vocal folds when you're breathing in and that 
can irritate them. It also, it also deposits in the lungs, obviously, which is really bad for you. And avoid excessive coffee. Now, um, speaking mostly to college students, and I know that um, doing some of these things is kind of part of the college experience, I will just say that moderation is key with almost everything. So enough said. Let's move on to smoking cigarettes. Deposits left on the laryngeal and bronchial tissues irritate. This results in coughing, which creates further irritation. Smoking can damage the action of the epithelium, which must be healthy for free vibration. I think maybe some people think smoking is cool. I think it's horrible and annoying to be around and smells bad and I have no idea why anybody smokes. Uh, here are um, two sets of lungs. You can probably imagine which one of these lungs belongs to a smoker and which one doesn't. It's just gross. And in addition to this, it can lead to all other bad, bad things in your body. So cancer, obviously, all different kinds of cancer. So uh, if you smoke right now, I understand that it's tough, but please, please quit and uh, don't hang around when people are smoking if you're a singer. Besides this, it is important to get out and exercise a little bit. This is, in, this is good for your lungs, it's good for your blood and your heart and all that kind of stuff. Don't sing if you're ill. So if you're feeling sick, you're best off not singing. But you can still practice. You can work on memorizing your, your music, you can think about the meaning of the song, you can maybe come up with some ideas to interpret the song, practice piano, practice arranging, write some new music, and uh, catch up on some listening. So maybe there's some new music that's come out in the past couple weeks that you haven't had a chance to check out. But when you need help, your first person to talk to is your voice teacher. They know your voice the best, and so they can let you know if, if you're too sick to sing and maybe what the next step would be. An otolaryngologist is, is someone that would scope your vocal folds and see if there's anything wrong there. They can also help hook you up with a speech language pathologist. So let's define healthy voice use really quick. If you can finish a performance feeling as though you could do it all over again. If you can sing several nights in a row and still feel comfortable singing the next day. If you can sing your high notes, low notes, loud notes, and soft notes and have them all clear with no evidence of push or strain. If you feel physically tired but can warm up your voice so it sounds fresh. If you know your physical condition is not normal, that you do not have sufficient energy to perform either because of a cold, a threatening cold, or physical fi fatigue, and you cancel. So that's how you know you're healthy. I know it's tough, but if, if you're sick, cancel. Don't sing. It'll be okay. I do want to mention also something in here, this idea of marking. I don't have a slide for it. Uh, marking is when you still go to rehearsal, but you don't sing with full voice. A lot of times it may mean that you sing something in your head voice that you would normally sing in your chest voice, um, or you sing lightly, uh, or you just kind of like mentally sing very quietly through the rehearsal. It's important to communicate to people that are in your ensemble if you're marking that uh, you're not being lazy or anything like that, but you're trying to save your voice for uh, when you really need it. Okay, so that's vocal hygiene. Thanks, and please check out the other videos in this section. There's a lot of stuff there that I think probably most people have a lot of questions about. Uh, check it out, and I'm excited to have our in-class discussion. Thank you.